Greetings, greetings. Hello, everyone. June Allen here from JuneAllen.net. So thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you're doing OK. Let me just make sure. Ah, let, OK, so I'm now live on Facebook. It was taking its time a minute there for um to get going. So anyway, so I hope that you're all doing well. Happy. What day is it today? Thursday. Happy Thursday. I hope that you're having a good week. Um, Hi, thanks for joining. So today I want to talk to you about different types of racial stress now oh I need to take a breath there's so much stuff there's always stuff going on in the press okay there's racism and whatever there's always stuff going on all the time but I wanted to take a minute to kind of jump on and and do this specific live stream around different types of racial stress because there's there's there seems to be a lot of a lot of the high profile stuff is is you know is out at the moment and I don't know about anybody else, but I know for me, I'm finding it quite um, triggering. I'm finding it upsetting. There's stuff going on in the UK. There's stuff going on, you know, in the US um, with, you know, these high profile stuff. Hi, thanks for joining. There's so much stuff going on. And so I just wanted to jump on and do this live stream um, out of support so that you can begin to understand a little bit about what's going on for you and also what to do with it because all of this stuff going on all the time you know there's a constant there's a constant stress there's constant stress that's going on all the time so it's important for you to understand as part of your self-care as part of your wellness practice that you understand what is happening to you and what what can you actually do about it okay what can you actually do about it so the first one is the individual events okay that's if somebody you know is done something specific to you around race okay so it could be somebody you know calling you a racial slur or um you know somebody in, in ignoring you in terms of a, a meeting that you should be in at work or whatever it is but these are specific events that are specific to you personally it could be police harassment that's another one um you know stop and search or whatever it is there's a lot of that goes on in the uk and there are um there have been loads of studies you know saying that a lot of it is you know a lot of it is around race so you know when it comes to stuff like that it's important that you have a safe space to be able to share that stuff you know document it if it's happening at work or whether it's the police or whatever it's important to document a lot of that stuff um so that if it does come up if you do decide to take it any further that you have um an accurate record of what's happened but in terms of your self-care it's important that you do share this stuff with somebody who understands because what I'm understanding is a lot of times when these things happen there's a lot of gaslighting that happens from the person that actually um was being the, was the person that actually created it hi Gloria thanks for joining um or if it's an organization there's a lot of denial oh you know you're too sensitive or they can say all of these things to gaslight you and make you think that what you're feeling and what you've what you've experienced is not racism they'll tell you that it's everything else but not racism it's sexism it's classism it's this it's that it's it they'll tell you anything else but they do not want to hold or take responsibility for the fact that it might be racism okay so it's important that you find a safe space to be able to have that conversation with people that are going to affirm and understand this is one of the reasons why the mastermind that i do i run a mastermind for black women and this is something that has come up quite a lot you know it's understanding first of all you have to understand the gaslighting okay so gaslighting is when somebody um tries to minimize your experience tries to make you think that what you're thinking and feeling is not racism okay we call it racial gaslighting this is racial gaslighting now um and they might try to make you think that you're crazy um or make or just create confusion around what you're thinking and feeling okay which when you you understand at gut level that it may be it's racism okay but other people are trying not to do that this happens a lot and this can this can have an impact on your um self-confidence your self-esteem and it's very damaging it's very damaging so having somewhere like the mastermind that I, that I um that i have for black women giving them a space to be able to talk openly about their experiences and also to have other people when they share their experiences and honestly and openly quite often other people will go oh my god i felt like that but i thought i was the only one so it's that shared understanding you know that shared understanding and there's this thing you know that you know black people are not all homogenous we don't all think the same we don't all feel the same but we do all have a shared common experience around these different types of racism 
So this is what this is why it's important, because one of the ways that the system operates is by being uh, uh, by making you think that you're crazy, by by our isolation, by dividing us and making us think that we're the only person that feels like that. So having a safe space, whether it's your therapist or whether it is a support group, whether it's a recovery meeting that's specifically for people of colour or whatever it is, use those spaces to be able to um, share your story and get others to um, to act so you get some understanding of that identification. That's really, really important. OK, so that's number one. The first type of racial stress is individual events. OK, the second one is transgenerational. OK, and this is trauma transgenerational trauma so this is what your parents or your family has passed down through the generations that you've normalized and that you can, sometimes you continue to act that out or not okay but because it's because it's a you know a lot of people say that a lot of the stuff that goes on in our um in our community um just becomes part of the quote unquote culture it isn't culture it's trauma okay a lot of it is trauma an example of that would be thinking it's okay to hit your children OK, now I know that white people hit their children as well before anyone comes for me in the comments or in, or in my inbox. I know that white people hit their children as well. But the difference between why we do it, OK, often there's a context of our ancestors. It happened to the, the, our ancestors in the in the in the uh, on the slave plantations. And so we reenact that behavior onto our children. And it comes from a place of. Um, yeah, it normalizes it. It's like it's like we you know as an, as an adults that have experienced trauma we don't understand our trauma we don't understand it we not process it in the in the most appropriate way so what happens is it gets dumped on the nearest thing to us that is vulnerable and it's quite often our children or our partners okay so it's not the same thing okay it's not the same thing it's racial trauma that gets passed down now the best way to deal with that obviously if you're not seeing a therapist already see a therapist Find yourself a therapist who's going to be able to understand what trans what um, transgenerational trauma is. OK, what transgenerational is. Yes. Thank you for putting that in the comments. It's repeating the cycles on automatic. Yes. And then we, en we end up accepting it. A lot of us end up accepting it or justifying it, you know, and, and, you know, a lot of us, we end up laughing about it. I know a lot of comedians will tell jokes and stuff about it. And that's the way that we kind of deflect from the pain of it. But if we're going to heal as a community, if we're going to heal as a people, we have to be willing to have these difficult conversations. OK, and we have to end those practices because that in of itself is internalized racism. OK, I'm going to say that again. Beating your children is internalized uh, racism. It's white supremacy on autopilot. And I know that's difficult to hear, but that is the reality. It's white supremacy on autopilot. And we're continuing that. The only way you're going to stop that behavior is if you recognize it for what it is. OK, you have to recognize it for what it is. And then and then as a result of that, you're going to be in a position to be able to make changes. But until we, we have that, you have that conversation with yourself and be willing to make those changes, it's, things are never going to change. And you can you can continue to blame white supremacy. You can continue to blame the white man. And yes, we know that the white man is responsible for a lot of our trauma. We know that. But the way that we change is we take responsibility for how we're enabling it. OK, we take responsibility for how we're enabling the system. OK, if you're not following this woman already, there's a woman called Dr. Stacey Patton. OK, she's written this amazing book, uh, amazing book on the subject. I've, I've worked with her in the past. I've written an article for her on her website. Um, and her, her website is called Spare the Kids. Her book is called Spare the Kids. If you read that book, she breaks down everything that I've been saying about how beating black children comes from the, the plantations and how we're continuing to re-traumatize ourselves and continuing that practice. OK, so if you haven't got that book already or if you're not, um, you know, go to her website, follow her of her on Facebook. She's got an amazing Facebook page where she talks a lot about that in, in a lot more detail. OK, that in of itself, that idea, that that element of racial stress is something that we do have the power to change that. That is something that is within our power as a community. OK. Yes, it does ultimately come from white supremacy, but we can once we start to recognize it, we can change it. All right. So that's number two. OK. Transgenerational trauma. The third one is vicarious trauma. OK. Vicarious racial trauma. And that is when we're exposed to stories from other people sharing, sharing their stories. And we, we it impacts us 
because obviously, you know, as, as black people as well, we hear those stories, we hear somebody else's story and it impacts us and it, and it traumatizes us in another way. So an example of that might be, um, you know, if you hear somebody sharing, a, you know, sharing a story on, you know, somebody that you know um, is sharing their, their story, say, of racism at work and it starts making you feel uncomfortable at work. Maybe you work in a white dominated organization that doesn't have great um, policies around racism at work. They might pay lip service to it and do a bit of tokenism here and there, but they're not really doing the work what they're supposed to be doing. So it might make you feel a bit uneasy, uncomfortable or whatever. And so you start to sort of question your sense of safety at work. Okay, that's an, that's an example of what vicarious racial trauma looks like. So that's when you're taking on the stress of somebody else's story, okay? Vicarious racial trauma or vicarious racial stress, okay? Number four, okay, is the daily microaggressions, okay? Everyday racism. So it might be going outside and, you know, being having stop and search by the police, okay? It might be going into a shop and somebody's following you around the shop because they think you're going to teeth something, okay? These, these are all incidents of everyday racism that we have to deal with on a daily basis and it's it's just you know there's a term for it as well i've seen it called weathering okay weathering is basically when we're constantly um uh, being exposed to racism at different levels different types different ways um and 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 you know it creates stress it creates it creates stress the stress of having to constantly be on your toes all the time is exhausting okay and you know i shared i did a i did a um i did a watch call it this week i did a, a corporate workshop this week where i talked about the concept of microaggressions whether it's at work or whether it's you're out and about in your daily life and using it using the um the analogy of paper cuts okay as microaggressions a, a paper cut okay you might get one paper cut everybody understands what it feels like to get a paper cut and if you get one paper cut you know it's a little bit sore or whatever but you're like you know you deal with it but when, if you paper cut yourself every single day, okay, after a while, your fingers starting to going to start to get really, really sore. Your hands going to get really sore. You might even get infected because you've got so many little small cuts on your hand from always being exposed to paper cuts. Okay, it's the same for microaggressions. Somebody might gaslight you and say, "Oh, you know, why are you being so sensitive?" or whatever it is. But when you're having to deal with microaggressions on a daily basis, day in, day out, okay, when you're going about your business, when you're trying to do your work or whatever it is, it, it, it actually can be, it ends up being harmful because it's consistently happening all the time, okay, on a daily basis. So this is the reason why it's important not to minimize your microaggressions, okay, and you, the way that you can deal with your microaggressions, I would say, you know, use your journal as well as a way to way to um, to do it, I use my journal to kind of write out, you know, what it was, what happened, what impact did it have on you, did it make you feel shame, did it make you feel angry, did it make you feel sad, um, you know, what action did you take, if any, do you think you need to take action, do you need to maybe share it with somebody else before you go back and take action, there's so many different things that you can you can do to deal with it, if you're dealing with it at work, is there a process in place to deal with microaggressions, if not, why not, do you need to escalate that, so many different questions, you know, do you even want to say anything, you know, is it safe for you to say something, or is it, is it, would it be enough for you just to take it to your support group and leave it there, you know, there are so many different things, so many different ways for you to deal with a lot of this stuff. OK, one one, you know, solution doesn't fit everybody. And sometimes I think when we're dealing with a lot of these things, especially when it involves the workplace or whatever, sometimes it does take time to build up resilience about how you're going to deal with it, especially if your workplace doesn't have anything in place or they're not used to it or they don't have the tools to, you know, they don't have any process in place to be able to deal with these things. And so you might end up feeling more unsafe by saying something they're not so it might be that you need to, you, it's going to take time for you to build resilience with this so it might be that you just you know for the while you're sort of it depends on where you are on your journey as well i think is what i'm trying to say because if you're early on in this, this journey and you're trying to figure out where you are in terms of what's happened to you in terms of your in terms of racism and stuff like that it might be that you just use your support network your support group to unpack a lot of stuff to build resilience so that you can understand 
what's happening to you, understanding your own codependency around it as well. That's the people pleasing part of you. Don't want to upset white people. Don't want to upset white feelings. This is all part of how white supremacy operates. It's about keeping you silenced. It's about not, not upsetting the white equilibrium. And if white people aren't doing this work, you know, it can feel very unsafe for you to then bring it to their attention. So using your support network, using your support group, okay, it's going to help you to unpack how you felt. It's going to help you unpack, you know, the people pleasing feelings. It's going to help you understand the fear, any shame that might come up, all that kind of stuff. But all of that stuff is validate, validated for you, which is a lot of the work that I do with the ladies in my group. Um, it just means that then you can make a decision. OK, do I feel strong enough internally to go back to this person and say, actually, what you said the other day or what you did the other day was actually inappropriate? OK, or it might be that you decide to not say anything at that time because you don't feel strong enough. But maybe next time you'll feel that you, you, you might feel a bit stronger to do it. OK, so it just takes time. So it's about you giving yourself understanding, giving yourself that self-compassion to understand what's happening for you first before you decide to, to, to take it to any of the organizations or whatever that you're going to have to challenge. All right. So be really gentle with yourself around that because it takes time. OK, it takes time to build up that resilience in order to do it. All right. So that's number four, daily microaggressions. All right. Number five is the collective trauma. OK, collective trauma as a community. This is a lot of the stuff that's actually going on at the moment now. So, you know, we've just recently heard about, um, you know, about Ahmad Arbery. He's he's uh, the people that killed him. You know, they've just been um, found guilty of it. They've not been sentenced yet or whatever, but they've just been found guilty. Um, yeah, there's so much there's so much. I'm not going to go into all of the different stuff that's going on, but you know, there's all the when, when we're thinking about collective trauma, we're all thinking about this person, this black man, another black man that was killed in broad daylight by white people. You know, we're thinking about George Floyd and how, you know, what that brought, brought up. You know, this stuff was going on years. It's been going on for centuries, you know, but obviously there were a few names that we can pinpoint that were kind of pivotal in 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 you know that the, there was so much more public but this has been going on for years it's been going on for centuries this has been going on for centuries and and it means that our grief we can never really fully grieve the loss of our of, 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 of our community being murdered by police being murdered by police or being murdered by white vig vigilantes that think that they can do this stuff and get away with it and a lot of them have got away with it a lot of them have got away with it you know, so our collective trauma is triggered every time something like this comes up in the press. OK, and what I would say to you around managing it is check in with yourself, check in with yourself, ask yourself what's happening to me right now. How am I feeling about this? Does, is it making me feel really unsafe about being about being black? Is it making me feel really vulnerable about being black? Do I need to give myself a break from social media? Do I need to just turn it off for a while so that I can so that I can really just give myself a minute just to think about these things. Just I just need a minute to think. I need a minute to just pause. It's OK to do that. Maybe you're feeling angry about it and you want to you want to take some action. It might be that you join a, a social justice group. You know, it might be that, you know, that you do need to join a support group so that you can vent and cuss and rage and cry and grieve. You know, you're a human being so many times that we've we experienced these things. And we end up just shutting ourselves off from what's happening because it, it's the vulnerability of it. Another black man that's murdered, another white person that's got away with it, another police officer that's been, you know, that, that's got away with it. You know, and, and it's not just about the people, the white people that get away with this stuff. I, I'm it, it's always sickening for me to see the money that people invest, the money that the funds that these people raise to get these to get these murderers off the hook. Yeah, they, these people raise money to get these people off the hook. So they, these people go out and murder black people. And then white people who think it's OK, raise money in order to help to make sure that those people get off. This is the level of dysfunction and sickness, OK, around people that practice white supremacy. This is the level of sickness. And then we have to sit there. We have to sit there and watch all this going on in the press. You know, it's going to have an impact. It's going to have an impact on how we feel about ourselves. It's going to have an impact on how we feel about each other. And it's important for us not to ignore it, because when we ignore it, we become numb. 
become numb to how we feel as human beings. We become numb to how we feel about each other. But it's about finding ways to be able to process what's going on for us without actually damaging ourselves and in, in, in at the same time. So find a safe space to be able to have those conversations. Acknowledge your anger, acknowledge your grief and find safe ways to be able to do that. If you go to my website, if you go to heal.juneallen.net, that's heal.juneallen.net, that's heal.juneallen.net, that, that I do have a free um, ebook with more details on, uh, so you can download it and there's loads of information in there about how you can deal with racial stress. There's a lot more stuff in there. Today's session is all about different types of stress, but this particular ebook will give you those of different ideas on how to manage it. Okay, so if you go to my go to heal.juneallen.net and you can download the, the ebook there. It's absolutely free. Okay, so you can you can do that. All right. So the the the, the sixth and final um, uh, type of racial stress is contextual stress. Okay, and that is just a general feeling of being vulnerable and feeling unsafe being in a black body living in living under under this inside the system of anti-blackness you know when you're constantly seeing all of these things being played out in the press over and over and over and over again with very little justice being served it it, it creates it creates it's stressful because it, it creates a feeling of it creates anxiety and i know so many black people who suffer with anxiety but they don't there's not enough of us having that conversation around this is this is contextual racial stress the anxiety is around the vulnerability of what it means to be have to have to have to live inside a black body there's a vulnerability that comes with having to sit inside a black body okay there's a vulnerability that comes with having to sit inside a black body and not and, and people not being held accountable for their behavior or feeling like you can't speak up or feeling like you can't say what you think or what you feel because you're upset you're you're afraid of upsetting white feelings upset afraid of upsetting white people all the time this contextual stress is draining okay having to silence yourself having to always having to worry about that all the time is it's it, 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 it's it's exhausting it's exhausting so the reason why I'm, why I'm saying all of this, because it's about giving you, helping you to understand what's happening to you. It's about giving you um, some language so that you can begin to understand what's happening to you, why you may be feeling the way that you're feeling, and some tools about what you can do about it. Because you can still be empowered, but you can still be empowered. Even though you're feeling stressful, the empowerment is in you taking, o taking ownership and taking agency over how you feel. You can't control how other people behave, but you can control how you respond to it. OK, you can control how you take care of yourself around it. And that means giving yourself permission to um, these are three things that I always always share to people. Give, finding a space to release, first and foremost, release the stress, whether it's physical, emotional, psychological, whatever it is, find a safe space to be able to release that. OK, reflect on what's happened, reflect on the impact that it's having on you as a black person, how you feel about yourself. OK, and then um, renew is what are you doing to nourish yourself culturally around it? OK, when I talk about cult cultural nourishment, it means reclaiming your culture, reclaiming how you feel about yourself, celebrating your blackness, being around other black people that feel the same as you so that you can that, 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 so that you can celebrate your culture together so that you you're you're flipping the anti blackness that you experience on a daily basis and, and turning it into something that you can celebrate, whether it's through food, whether it's through music, whether it's through writing, whether it's through reading books or whatever it is. Find a way to nourish yourself. Find a way to nourish yourself. OK, find a way to nourish yourself, you know, for, especially now with all of this stuff going on, you know, with 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 the pandemic um, still ongoing and all the rest of it. There are so many more reasons to isolate, to not talk about it, to get stuck in your own feelings, to deny it, all of that kind of stuff, because you're trying, you know, you're trying to do your best. You're doing this, that and the other. You know, but there is when all of that's happening now is an even more important time than ever and ever to take care of yourself, to look after yourself. OK, and to not ignore what's happening. So those are the six types of racial stress. Number one, individual events. OK, number two, transgenerational. 
transgenerational trauma. Number three, vicarious uh, racism, vicarious racial trauma. Number four, microaggressions, daily microaggressions, everyday racism. Number five, collective trauma, okay? Collective tra trauma or racial stress. And number six is contextual stress, okay? Those are the six things that you need to think about. I hope that you found it useful. If you've got any questions or anything about anything that I've shared, please send me a direct DM or you can email me info at yardofgreatness.com. Thank you so much for joining me today and I will see you next time. Please, please, please look after yourself in these times. Okay, it's really important. All right, have a good day and I will see you next time. All right, take care. Bye.